بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم We know from the Quran and from the history books that the pre-Islamic Arabs sought eternality in temporality. That means that because they did not have a clear conception, most of them, of the afterlife, of life after death, um, that this dramatically impacted how they thought about the life that they had in front of them uh, and how they behaved uh, in that life, in the time that they felt they were given. So they wanted to taste eternality, right? So it was as if they had a concept of eternality, but they didn't believe that it was real, at least not for them as human beings, right? They didn't have a concept of an eternal soul, right? They kind of just had a concept of their environment having this sort of eternality to it because they were in a desert, it's this large expanse, um, you know, you can see the clarity of, of the stars in the universe when you look up and there, they did have this sense of eternality as it related to nature, but not as it related to themselves. Um, but they craved it, they craved eternality, they wanted to taste it. Uh, and in their wanting to experience something of eternality, uh, this led many of them into hedonistic practices, right? They wanted to, uh, you know, get as much of life as they could. And, you know, just like today, um, where we find people who do very extreme sports um, or just sort of extreme practices because they say they want to feel they're most alive, um, Arabs, pre-Islamic Arabs had a concept of that too, of wanting to feel their most alive um, and have a taste of what it meant to be without bounds, um, to be free or unconstrained. Um, and because of this, many of them engaged in what we would consider hedonistic behavior, right? So excessive uh, drinking of alcohol, excessive partying, um, you know, extramarital relations to an excess. They, they engaged in a lot of, of excess, um, and, uh, and yet they were still pessimistic, right? So we find in the, the poetry of the pre-Islamic Arabs, they talked a lot about how life was just inevitably going to end and that after death, there is nothing else. Um, and poetry in which they're, they're weeping about the things that will inevitably pass um, and how as much as they want to live and enjoy life, the more they live, the, the more they know that they are going to pass. Um, so they still had this pessimistic conception of life, even though um, they had these extremes Right, they wanted to engage in these extreme experiences to make them feel more alive. And we find, interestingly, um, a parallel today in many aspects of our culture. Um, so because they didn't have this strong conception of a life after death, of after death, of a soul that continues on past the um, past the death of the physical body, this affected how they thought and how they behaved um, in the life that they had in the time that they were given. Uh, and it's a lesson for us that whenever you feel that all you have is the earthly life, is this life, is, is these number of years um, until, you know, until we all taste death, um, there will be suffering. There will be suffering when we feel so constrained, when we feel like this life is all that we have. And of course, in our Islamic conception, we believe, like the pre-Islamic Arabs believed, that yes, this life will pass, of course, but we have this fundamental life-changing difference, this shift 
that the message of the Prophet والسلام, brought, uh, which is this conception of life after death. And uh, so much is predicated upon our believing in that and in our having a strong conception in our mind that life after death is a real thing. And once we recognize uh, and believe in the existence of the world to come, which of course we all do, then there's less of a need to despair, right? Because then we recognize that the life that we have here, as important as it is, as real as it is and it feels, um, it's just a part of our overall life, right? That our soul goes on, that we pass, yes, but we pass on to another phase of existence. And so we don't have to feel this constraint, like everything has to be fit into these 70, 80 years, because after this, we will cease to exist. Um, and you see reference over and over again in the Quran of God talking about uh, the Arabs as people who prefer this life, who have such a, uh, a lust for this life, right? There's verses over and over about that and people who don't believe in the next life. And, the God, and God, uh, you know, confirms for us that no, there's life after death and that the life that comes after death is better than this life uh, and it's everlasting, right? The thing that they were craving, um, it doesn't, it can't be confined here, right? Everlastingness does exist, right? But it's beyond the material uh, conception of this life. It's far beyond uh, what we can see and feel and touch. And this is an important reminder for us, I think, because even though all of us as Muslims, we have a strong conception of the afterlife, it's still the case that we can think and act as if this life is all that we have. Um, and I think that's because at the root of it, that's a very human way of viewing things, right? As humans, we have a very, uh, we're very attached to what's in front of us, right? And God has made it so that we can be in the world uh, in a successful way and thrive in the world. And so what we make of this life feels very real for us. Um, but sometimes we can operate almost as if we believe that this life is all that we have, right? That after our, that when we pass, there's nothing after it. And I think you will find for yourself, as I have found for myself, um, that it is often when we feel our most frustrated about our life circumstances, um, about what's before us, about what we want to achieve in life, uh, it's often in those moments that really we're conceiving of life as if this is all that it is, as if everything is riding on this opportunity or this job or this school. Um, oftentimes the source of our despair as human beings is this sense of constraint that our time is so limited and of course there's truth to that and of course Allah wants us to use our time here wisely and to be the best people that we can be and to have ihsan in what we do we know that to be true um, but he also informed us about life after death and we have that as something to kind of balance us when we get into moments of extreme uh, focus on the things of this life. Um, when we get to moments of uh, intense anxiety about what course or what direction our life is taking. Um, 
and what opportunities that we feel we have to cease, uh, to seize and to, to take advantage of. And we have this conception of life after death, of the fact that this is not all there is. And in the balance of eternality, right, in the balance of never ending life, how much does this matter? Do I need to feel this level of anxiety or hopelessness or stress? And again, it shouldn't make us lazy, but it's just a balance um, when we get in those moments where we're operating almost as if we feel this life is all we have and that we need to make our mark and we need to make these moves. And if we don't, then nothing matters, then our life doesn't matter. Um, and so and so this is the message that I want to uh, remind myself and, and you of, which is that when we get in those moments of anxiety and stress, it's so important for us to step back and ask ourselves, are we thinking as people who believe that this life is just a part of a much longer life? Or are we operating as people who believe that this is it and we need to get as much out of it as we can before we pass? Um, so may Allah bless you. And uh, inshallah, I hope everyone watching, including myself, reaches Ramadan and is able to benefit from it uh, even more than we have previously. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.